In this Excel video, I'm going to show you two new Excel text manipulation functions, and they are VStack and HStack. Let's get started. So here I have some data in Excel that shows four different quarters worth of sales. So we have first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter, and they're arranged horizontally. But what if I decided that I want my data all to be vertically lined up? Well, I could cut and paste and go through the whole process of reorganizing this spreadsheet, or I could do it with a formula. So I'm going to click here on A14. I'll type equals VStack, and Excel describes what VStack does. Vertically stacks arrays into one array. So I'll finish typing that out. I'll put in a left parenthesis. Now all I have to do is describe array number one. And I could type that in. I could put A1 through E12, and that highlights the array. Or, as you probably know, I could click and drag to highlight the range that makes up the array. So there it is. And notice that I did include the column labels. So band and album, price, etc. I did include that in my first array. Now I'll put in my comma. Next, Excel is looking for array number two. So that's over here. And this time I'm not going to include the column labels. I could, there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't think it's necessary. So I'm gonna click and drag to select that range there. Back in my formula, either here or up here. I think I'll go up here to do this. I'll put in my comma. Now Excel is looking for array number three. That's here, click and drag, put in another comma into my formula. And finally, my last array, array number four. Click and drag, highlight the range that makes up the array. And then up here in the formula bar or in the formula here in cell A14, I just need to put in a right parenthesis. I find it easier often to do that here in the formula bar. So that's why I'm going up here. I'll put in my right parenthesis, tap enter on the keyboard, and look what happens. My data that spread over these four different arrays all the way across horizontally across my spreadsheet, that's all now been reproduced below where I typed my formula. It's in the order in which I put those arrays, array number one, array number two, and so you can see in this case the quarters are in order. Quarter one, two, three, and four. Now this new formula can be very handy. It helps you to quickly, dynamically arrange your data in a new way. Now just be aware that the data that you see here in this new array that's been produced by the formula, it's dependent upon the data up here above. So what happens if I change the contents of cell A2? I type that in, I tap enter on the keyboard, and you can see that the results from my formula update based on that change. So you can imagine what would happen if I simply deleted the data that that formula and the array below rely on. If I clear out that data, it ruins this array that I've created. I'm gonna undo that. So what if I do want to just get rid of this old data and make this new array the focus of this spreadsheet? What could I do? Well, I could select all of the data in that new array, and I'll just right click on this range that I've selected, choose copy, and then I'm gonna go down here to the lower left corner of Excel, and I'll click on this plus sign to get a new sheet. And then here on the sheet, I can paste in the data that I've just copied. But I'm not gonna do just a typical paste. What I want to do is go here to the Home tab in the Clipboard group. I'm gonna click on the bottom part of the Paste button, and I'm going to select Paste Values. I'll click here. So now, when I click on the different parts of this array, this range of data, you can see here in the formula bar that what you see is what you get. This cell is no longer dependent on the data here above on sheet one. It's independent of that because I pasted the values. So now I could even just delete sheet one, right click on it, choose delete, delete again, it's gone. And I could dress up this data a little bit by let's say clicking and dragging from A to E, double click between any two of those column letters. That will space the data a lot better. And then I'm gonna click on row number one and make it bold and make it centered. I think that looks a lot better. And so at this point, I've successfully taken my data that was in horizontal arrays. And by using the VStack function, I've stacked them on top of each other vertically into one array. Now, what if I wanted to go the opposite direction? What if I wanted to take this data and make it horizontal? Let's try that. So I'll click here on cell G1, 
and I'll type equals h stack, left parenthesis, I need to show array number one, here it is, comma, array number two, I'll click and drag to select that, and you'll notice that Excel highlights it in a different color. I'll put in my comma, here's array number three with the third quarter data, comma, and then I'll click and drag to get array number four for the fourth quarter data. Right parenthesis, tap enter on the keyboard, and you can see what happened. It worked just fine. My data is all there, but because my arrays had different numbers of rows, they weren't all the same. Because of that, the data is messed up a little bit. You can see that first quarter, it says band and album, it says price, quarter, etc. But for quarter number two, it didn't have any data there for that slot, and so it moved everything up. So let's do that again, and with just a little bit of prevention, we can make that work better. So I'm gonna right click on row number 13, and I'll choose insert. I'll do the same thing on row number 25 now, insert, and row number 37. Right click, insert, and then I'm simply going to click and drag to highlight the labels that are here at the top. I'll just do a control C to copy, and then I'll click here, control V to paste, and I'll do that again here and here. So let's try it again, equals, H stack, left parenthesis, first array, comma, second array, comma, third array, comma, fourth array. And then I should put in my right parenthesis, but I don't actually have to, and it worked. Now if I use this arrow here to move to the right, you can see all four quarters are represented, and they all have the proper labels. I could then click and drag to highlight the column letters, double click between any two of them to space it out properly, and that looks a lot better. One last tip, when you're using HStack, as you can see, sometimes it's kind of hard to differentiate between the first array and the second array. They kind of just run into each other, one into the next and into the next. So I'm gonna undo that a couple of times just to show a little trick. Here on G1, I'll type equals HStack, left parenthesis, array number one, and I'm just gonna do array one and two in this example, but it would work with all four. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put in quotation marks, space, and then quotation marks, comma, and then I'll put in my second array. There we go. I should put in my right parenthesis, but I don't really have to. I'll tap enter on the keyboard, and you can see it worked. Now, because I added this quotation marks with a blank space, I do get a blank column here. Now, if you don't want the NA error to show up here, you can go to your formula, and in front of the H stack, you can put if NA, Put in a left parenthesis, and then at the very end of your formula here, just put in a comma, and then in quotes, you could put another blank space if you want, right parenthesis, tap enter on the keyboard, and you can see what happened. If there's an NA error with this formula, it produces just a blank space here in column L. So now I could resize those columns just by selecting all of them, double clicking between any two, and it worked, and I've got this nice little spacer here in column L, and I could stretch that out wider if I want to. So this is just the beginning of using VStack and HStack. There's actually quite a bit more that you can do with them, but I hope that you found this introductory video on VStack and HStack to be helpful. If you have, please like, follow, and subscribe, and when you do, click the bell, and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider clicking the Thanks button below the video, or you can support me on my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see more information about those options in the description below the video. 